I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything. This is weird though, because what if somebody saves my number? What's just happened on can, the screen? Can you, can you play the? Can you play the gift? I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean? Hola, 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 and welcome to Backlash Against the Bland, the podcast asked by you and answered by experts, artists, and activists. We're dealing with the questions that young people are asking, but no one is answering. Welcome to the Black Podcast. We are live from the office with a big projector in front of us. You might be thinking, why have you got a big projector up? It's 8 p.m. in the evening. I'm with some lovely guests and we are running our Blab online activism. Is it an effective resource or is it just a substitute for social action? So the way it's gonna work is um, Blab is a platform for a series of discussion, debates and conversations. We run each one happens completely differently so the format's different so the last one we ran was um does art endanger your mental health um, and the way we did it is we hung panelists from a ceiling and we got the audience to move them up and down depending on how dangerous or not their answer was and um, we've always been playing with it we play with the format we play with the questions and this time we thought it's about online activism so why not host it in a WhatsApp conversation? We've got three incredible panelists that are in the WhatsApp live now. Miles Dyer, who's an activist and a YouTuber. Uh, Lucy Hammonds, who is a creative practitioner and an activist from Barbados. Um, I think Miles is joining us from Leeds at the moment. I think he just got into Leeds. And uh, Patience Akumu, who is joining us from Uganda. So it is an international conversation that's happening. There's loads of people in the chat. I can see there's lots of emojis, which I love. Um, online activism, what does it mean maybe to you, Bilal? Uh, personally, I feel online activism, you know, it's a way in which we can use the internet and um, our ability to network in order to further our abilities to be activists in the real world. I feel that activism requires real action, you know, marching, protests, just a bit of, you know, fire and fury. And I feel like online activism takes that further. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead, yeah. Have you ever signed a petition online? Yeah. Have you? I have, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then have you ever signed a petition online that you've then gone on to do something physical about? Be completely honest. Okay, being completely honest. Um, so I think the last time that I signed a petition before I was like bombarded by change.org with all these <laughs> other petitions that, you know, that they want me to, to sign as well. Um, I think it was a couple of years ago and it was something that I don't think I actually know. I don't think I actually did go out and do something about it. I think it's definitely something to do. I don't think it's the best thing you can do, but I think that signing a petition is better than just sitting back and seeing something you don't like and not doing anything about it. Yeah, definitely. I, th I think there's something to say about accessibility there as well, because mm. um, I think if you're in a position where you can go to like a rally or a protest um, outside, um, then that's great. But there are situations where some people might not necessarily be able to do that, whether that's access issues, um, whether that's a guardian who has children, um, uh, maybe an elderly person um, who is not necessarily uh, fit and well to go out. So I think in terms of broadening accessibility for people, um, then yes, it's a, it's a great way to kind of like join in conversations. Um, but I would say that it's it's not a substitute it's definitely um one way of doing activism yeah it's a different avenue 
Yeah. 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 Oh, somebody challenged. Um, <laughs> so, but I've also heard the critique that it doesn't translate into action, rather constant discussion. Yeah, I think that that happens. I don't think it necessarily happens all the time, but it can happen. And I think it's interesting when Amira asks you the question, have you ever signed up for anything? And then actually put that into action because I know that I very easily get caught up in kind of like live politics and I'm getting riled yeah. and I'm getting passionate and I'm and then I see the change you know petition or somebody else's petition and I'm like I'm gonna sign up for this I'm gonna give you my email my details <laughs> you know and I'm sat there at my laptop and then no. submit share it on my Facebook laptop lid goes down and I go back to watching EastEnders or whatever's on Netflix. And yeah. I feel like if it comes up, like if I see a petition and I don't sign up for it, then I feel awful that I haven't signed up for it. Yeah. So in signing up for something, that's it. I've done the good deed of the day. And that's really bad. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you could say that there are negatives to, uh, to, to signing up to petitions because obviously there isn't any further action with most of us. Um, I'm not sure about the few that actually look at a petition, read it, and are convinced enough to to, to go out and and do something about it, which actually can can affect the the whole um, the whole kind of reason uh, idea behind it. But I do think that, in a sense, we are kind of um, put to, uh, put to sign these petitions purely because you know what someone wants us to sign it, and they use these kind of techniques to to make us sign it. I don't think it's necessarily bad for us to do it. I think, you know, we're just persuaded in a sense. Hi, folks. We're coming in live from Beef Freaks HQ. Uh, this is the podcasting team, podcasting blab contingent. Give them a scream. Hey! We've just been chatting about a really interesting point, which says signing online um, petitions and online activism can actually, like, quell your political anger. And it's exactly that anger that gets you out going marching, going and talking to people and being really passionate about the issues um, that, you know, you're, you're protesting for. And when you go and sign a petition, that sort of quells this anger, uh, makes you feel like you've done something when, in fact, maybe you haven't. Uh, what do you guys all think about that? Ooh. Hey, everyone. Miles here. I uh, hope you're all doing well. I'm glad I'm not the first one to do the audio uh, recording. Um, I messed up my first one. And then um, as I cancelled it, I saw uh, the studio one come in. And it's great to hear um, everyone there. Um, my direct response to this idea about um, online activism, and especially in the context of petitions, is I've always seen it as a matter of a spectrum of engagement. And so obviously the term we often hear is slacktivism. If you're just liking a status or clicking share, some people would dis, you know, say that's not really doing much. And for me, it's like, let's not discourage those that do that. We can say, yes, more can be done. But the way that you um, create more change and more engagement is by showing people the stepping stones of how they can do more next time. Um, and so actually petitions... Um, and the shareability of it saying, you know, I've got behind this issue is a good first step because what you might find is you share it, it then causes people to start commenting and expressing their opinions. And as a result, you might start networking with um, people that have similar interests and that can be the beginning of your, your activist journey. But this whole idea of saying you're either an activist or a slacktivist, um, I'm sure we'll all agree, is unhelpful. And so with this spectrum of engagement, it's always a question of how do we make people move up the scale um, of becoming more and more engaged with the issues that matter to them. Oh, we can voice now. That makes us so much easier. Okay, so my opinion is that, yes, I guess for some people it quells their passion, but then for others it really doesn't. Like for me, with the work that I would have done, Doing online activism and raising awareness and seeing all the people engage with that activism only inspires you to do more and only pushes you to do more because you know that if you can feel a community behind you because of a cause, then you want to keep pushing that community to adopt certain behaviors or change certain behaviors. And that's where you would do a march or that's where you would do um, an event or 
uh, a campaign in schools or combine it with community action, right? So there's nothing wrong with getting, with feeling like all I have to do is share this meme or share this post or whatever, which is fine. But then don't think that just because you saw, you shared that post that that makes you an activist. That may mean that you had some small interaction with an active with activism or advocacy, but that does not make you an activist. Yeah, I mean, I like what she said as well. I mean, um, the whole kind of idea of if you just click something, if you sign up to a petition or if you, you know, if you just say, hey, I support this online, that doesn't make you an activist, you know? I agree with that completely. You've got to take more steps in real life and you've got to, you know, put in a lot more effort um, in real life to become an activist. You can't just click something and say, hey, I'm an activist, you know? I think it's definitely something to do. I don't think it's the best thing you can do, but I think that signing a petition is better than just sitting back and seeing something you don't like and not doing anything about it. I also want to add just one last um, thing with regards to people just quote unquote, just sharing a meme or just sharing a post. Um, so as I said, one of the things that I, I advocate strongly for is LGBTQ rights in the Caribbean. and in the majority of our caribbean countries to be lgbtq is against the law so when you have people who know this and it's greatly and heavily discriminated against like you don't want people to know that you're lgbtq if you are or you might have a select community that might and so in that context when people then share a meme in barbados that is that says something as simple a slogan as simple as love is love that is so <laughs> that is so massive because we live in a society where no one would dare to say that and then you show young people that they can be accepting and they can accept themselves so yeah i don't know i guess it's all contextual but for me i don't want i don't want to disregard anyone's attempt at stepping into the process of being outspoken yeah. i think i think though we have to look at the kind of impact of a petition when it goes through yeah. so um if we you know there's a petition that says oh we want to change something and then they get all the signatures and even more isn't that change in itself it might not be direct it might be indirect but it is change i'm going to just interject because we've had a really I think an interesting um, response in the WhatsApp group. So I asked the question a while back: um, "What is activism?" We haven't actually addressed what we believe activism. What we believe yeah. activism is. Okay. Um, Miles has responded with, um, "What is the meaning of activism? Good to address. I'm happy to have a conversation about the concept of it." But as definition, I tend to go with this simple notion: activism is taking action for and against for or against a political or social cause. In brackets, technically being against something is to be for something else. And I like the idea that all activism should involve presenting a solution. So it's better to be for something than against. I, don't, I, I really like that. I like that, but I don't, I don't agree with the bringing the solution part. I think that activism, even if you don't know a solution, actually going out and, and fighting for something is activism, even if, <laughs> put it in the group. I, I definitely agree with the your definition of activism, but there's one thing that I don't agree with, actually. It's the saying that uh, should involve presenting a solution. I do think that even if you don't have a solution, being active, you know, going out there and fighting for something in order to find a solution is actually still effective, even if you don't know what the solution is. Fighting and saying, I don't like this, you know, I'm, I'm disagreeing with this. I think that's effective in itself. Miles has responded to my voice note. Um, saying that I don't agree with, you know, um, activism having to have a reason behind it, more that activism in itself is effective. And he says, yeah, I agree with that, actually. I misrepresented my view, should have said presenting solutions are preferable, and that even if you don't have a solution, framing your activism so it is for something is beneficial. For example, instead of being against racism, being for racial justice. Because even if you don't have the solution at hand, it at least steers the conversation with others in a way that looks for common ground and thus solution building further down the line. And I agree with that completely, 100%. You know, activism, if it gets you to a solution and it sorts your problem out, activism is perfect for you. Does it sort your problem out? If it does, if it does sort um, your problem out, then, then it's, then it's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, even if it doesn't sort your problem out, being out there and actually being active rather than being slacked in mm. is, um, is important. You could be planting the seed and then in somebody else, couldn't you? Even what, if you don't way? come up with a solution, you could be planting the seed in, in somebody else exactly, and giving them yeah. the confidence yeah. to try and find the solution. As, and they yeah, could find the solution. Definitely, definitely. As activists, That's a beautiful we're thing. not expecting, you know, going out once saying, oh yeah, believe in what I believe. And then everyone suddenly turns and says, you know what, he's right. No. This is probably not going to be the last time I say this, but I just have to. I absolutely love this. <laughs> it's just so cool to speak with people all over the world in this format. And I'm just really surprised it hasn't at least been on my radar uh, any time recently. And much love to you all, um, Lucy, um, Beat Freaks, um, Camille, I think it was, who's at the gym, which is amazing. Uh, I heard someone dropping weights in the background, so you be careful, yeah. This podcast is user built, so please head to the description or write in the comments to leave your feedback. Backlash Against the Bland is supported by The Space and Arts Council England through National Lottery Funding. It's been hosted by me, Bethany Slynn, produced by Fabio Thomas, with graphic design by Bradley Morrison, audio visual editing by Pete Stiles, animation by Malika Holder, and music by Earwax Addict. Like, subscribe, subscribe, share and review, review, subscribe, review.